with Larry and learn the lyric. Thank you. someone new. Why? I'm not exactly proud of my past. Well, who is? That's what the word means, Paul. Past. Listen, that might be easy for you to say, but when Look, you... wait a minute. What made you start dancing? Your parents? No. What do Puerto Ricans know about theater? I mean, now they have Channel 47, but then they didn't have anything. My father loved movies. He'd work nights and he'd come home and he'd take us to 42nd Street. We'd uh, go see one movie, then come out of another, then another movie. I don't know why, but I love musicals. How old were you? Seven or eight. On 42nd Street? Yeah, it was a trip. Go on. Well, I had to move down front, because I couldn't see. I wear contact lenses now. I moved down front. And these strange men would come sit beside with me and play with me. I don't know why I never told anyone. I just, <clears throat> well, I guess it didn't matter. Why didn't it matter? Why? Um. Well, look, Paula, if this is too rough for you, I have your picture <laughs> resume. No. No, it's okay. Okay. Well, from seeing all those movie musicals, I used to jump around and dance around in the street all the time. God, it was embarrassing. I was always being, I was always being Sid Charisse. Always. Which I didn't quite understand because I always wanted to be an actor. I mean, I really wanted to perform. Once my cousin said to me, you'll never be an actor. And I knew she was saying this because I was such a sissy. I mean, I was always terribly effeminate. I always knew I was gay. That didn't bother me. What bothered me was I didn't know how to be a boy. One day I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you are 14 years old and you're a faggot. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? By that time, I was in Cardinal Hayes High School. There were 3,000 boys there. I had no protection anymore. No home room where I could be charming and funny with the tough guys so they'd fight my battles for me. Like when I went to small schools. I liked school. But my grades got so bad. I mean, I wouldn't even raise my hand to answer questions because I was afraid that they would laugh at me. They didn't even whistle at me in the hallways. It was awful. Just awful. Finally, I went down to the principal's office and said, I'm a homosexual. Well, it was a Catholic high school. <laughs> and at the age of 15, you just didn't say that. He said, would you like to see a psychologist? And I did. And he said, you seem very well adjusted for your age. I think that you should quit school. <laughs> and I did. But I didn't really want to. I just, I just couldn't take it anymore. <clears throat> You see, when I quit school, what I was trying to do was I was trying to find out who I was and how to be a man. You know, there are a lot of people in this world that don't know how to be men. And since then, I found out that I am one. I was looking for the wrong thing. I was trying to learn how to be butch. Well, I started hanging around 72nd Street, meeting all these really strange people, just trying to make friends that were like me, so that I knew what it was that I was. Well, someone told me that they were holding auditions, 
at the Jewelbox Review, they were looking for male dancers. You know, for the drag show. And from all those years of watching Citrice, I had this fabulous extension. I mean, I could turn anything my first audition. So I go out to audition. And they said, you're too short to be a boy. Would you like to be a pony? And I said, what's that? And he said, a girl. What do I have to do? Show us your legs. Um, but I have hair on my legs. That's okay, come on upstairs. So I went upstairs and they hiked up my dungarees in front of this pair of nylon stocking and heels. It was so freaky. It was incredible. <coughs> I went back downstairs and they said, oh, you have wonderful legs. And I said, Really? <laughs> Terrific. Oh, it's so crazy thinking about all this. It was a lifetime ago. I was just past 16. Ah, and then there was this thing of me trying to hide it from my parents. That was something. Because I had to buy all this stuff, like shoes to rehearse in, earrings, makeup. And I'd have to hide it all, and my mother would find it, and I'd have to explain to her there was this girl in the show, and she didn't want her parents to know what she was doing, and she believed me. Well, I was finally in show business. It was the asshole of show business, but it was a job. Nothing to brag about. I had friends, but after a while, it seemed like none of them had any dignity. And most of them were ashamed of themselves and considered themselves freaks. I don't know. I just think it's the lack of dignity that got to me. So I left. Oh, I muddled around for a while. I was an office boy and a waiter. But without a good education, you just can't get a good job. So when the jukebox called and asked if I'd come back, I went. We were working the Apollo Theater on 125th Street, doing um, four shows a day with the movie. It was really tacky. The show was going to go to Chicago. Well, my family wanted to say goodbye, and they were going to drop my luggage off in the theater after the show. Well, we were doing this Oriental number, and I looked like Anna Mae Wong. I mean, I had these two great big chrysanthemums on either side of my head, this huge headdress with gold balls hanging all over it. I was going on for the finale, and as I was going down the stairs, who should I see at the stage door? My parents. They got there too early. I freaked. I didn't know what to do. I suddenly thought to myself, I know. I'll just walk looking past them like all the others and they'll never recognize me. So I took a deep breath and I started down the stairs. And just as I passed my mother, I hear her say, Oh my God. Well, I died. What could I do? I had to go on for the finale. So I went. After the show, when I was in my changing room, and after I got done changing and taking off my makeup, I went back downstairs. And there they were, standing in the middle of all these freaks. And all they said was, things right, make sure you eat. Take care of yourself. And just as my family was about to leave the theater, my father turns to the producer and he says, Take care of my son. Well, that was the first time he ever called. Bring him in. <laughs> 